The Gurjara Pratihara dynasty, also known as the Pratihara Empire, was an imperial power during the late classical period on the Indian subcontinent, that ruled much of northern India from the mid-8th to the 11th century. They ruled first at Ujjain and later at Kannauj. The Gurjara Pratiharas were instrumental in containing Arab armies moving east of the Indus River. Nagarbhata I defeated the Arab army under Janaid and Taman during the Caliphate campaigns in India. Under Nagarbhata II, the Gurjara Pratiharas became the most powerful dynasty in northern India. He was succeeded by his son Ramabhadra, who ruled briefly before being succeeded by his son, Mahira Bhoja. Under Bhoja and his successor Mahendrapala I, the Pratihara Empire reached its peak of prosperity and power. By the time of Mahendrapala, the extent of its territory rivaled that of the Gupta Empire stretching from the border of Sindh in the west to Bengal in the east and from the Himalayas in the north to areas past the Narmada in the south. The expansion triggered a tripartite power struggle with the Rashtrakuta and Pala empires for control of the Indian subcontinent. During this period, Imperial Pratihara took the title of Maharajadaraja of Aryavata, Great King of Kings of India. Gurjara Pratihara are known for their sculptures, carved panels and open pavilion-style temples. The greatest development of the style of temple building was at Kajaraho, now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The power of the Pratiharas was weakened by dynastic strife. It was further diminished as a result of a great raid led by the Rashtrakuta ruler Indra III, who, in about 916, sacked Kannauj. Under a succession of rather obscure rulers, the Pratiharas never regained their former influence. Their feudatories became more and more powerful, one by one throwing off their allegiance until, by the end of the 10th century, the Pratiharas controlled little more than the Gangetic Doab. Their last important king, Rajapala, was driven from Kannauj by Mahmud of Ghazni in 1018. Etymology <inaudible> <inaudible> and origin The origin of the dynasty and the meaning of the term Gurjara in its name is a topic of debate among historians. The rulers of this dynasty used the self-designation Pratihara for their clan, and never referred to themselves as Gujaras. They claimed descent from the legendary hero Lakshmana, who is said to have acted as a Pratihara doorkeeper for his brother Rama. Some modern scholars theorize that a Pratihara ancestor served as a Minister of Defense, or Pratihara, in a Rasthrakuta court, and that is how the dynasty came to be known as Pratihara. Multiple inscriptions of their neighboring dynasties describe the Pratiharas as Gurjara. The term Gurjara Pratihara occurs only in the Rajor inscription of a feudatory ruler named Mathanadeva, who describes himself as a Gurjara Pratihara. According to one school of thought, Gurjara was the name of the territory see Gurjara Desha originally ruled by the Pratiharas. Gradually, the term came to denote the people of this territory. An opposing theory is that Gurjara was the name of the tribe to which the dynasty belonged, and Pratihara was a clan of this tribe. Among those who believe that the term Gurjara was originally a tribal designation, there are disagreements over whether they were native Indians or foreigners. The proponents of the foreign origin theory point out that the Gurjara Pratiharas suddenly emerged as a political power in North India around 6th century CE, shortly after the Huna invasion of that region. Critics of the foreign origin theory argue that there is no conclusive evidence of their foreign origin, they were well assimilated in the Indian culture. Moreover, if they invaded Indian through the northwest, it is inexplicable why would they choose to settle in the semi-arid area of present-day Rajasthan rather than the fertile Indo-Gangetic plain. According to the Agni Vansha legend given in the later manuscripts of Prithviraj Razo, the Pratiharas and three other Rajput dynasties originated from a sacrificial fire pit Agnikunda at Mount Abu. Some colonial era historians interpreted this myth to suggest a foreign origin for these dynasties. According to this theory, the foreigners were admitted in the Hindu caste system after performing a fire ritual. However, this legend is not found in the earliest available copies of Prithviraj Razo. 
It is based on a Paramara legend. The 16th century Rajput bards probably extended the original legend to include other dynasties, including the Pratiharas, in order to foster Rajput unity against the Mughals. History The original center of Pratihara power is a matter of controversy. R. C. Majumdar, on the basis of a verse in the Harivamsha Purana, AD 783, the interpretation of which he conceded was not free from difficulty, held that Vatsaraja ruled at Ujjain. Dasharatha Sharma, interpreting it differently, located the original capital in the Binmala Jalor area. M. W. Meister and Shanta Rani Sharma concur with his conclusion in view of the fact that the writer of the Jaina narrative Kuvalayamala states that it was composed at Jalor in the time of Vatsaraja in AD 778, which is five years before the composition of Harivamsha Purana. <laughs> Early rulers Nagarbhata I extended his control east and south from Manda, conquering Malwa as far as Gwalior and the port of Baruch in Gujarat. He established his capital at Avanti in Malwa, and checked the expansion of the Arabs, who had established themselves in Sindh. In this battle 738 CE, Nagarbhata led a confederacy of Gurjara Pratiharas to defeat the Muslim Arabs who had till then been pressing on victorious through West Asia and Iran. Nagarbhata I was followed by two weak successors, who were in turn succeeded by Vatsraja 775-805. In the Gwalior inscription, it is recorded that Gurjara Pratihara Emperor Nagarbhata crushed the large army of the powerful Mulchcha king. This large army consisted of cavalry, infantry, siege artillery, and probably a force of camels. Since Taman was a new governor he had a force of Syrian cavalry from Damascus, local Arab contingents, converted Hindus of Sindh, and foreign mercenaries like the Turkics. Altogether the invading army may have had anywhere between 10-15,000 cavalry, 5,000 infantry, and 2,000 camels. The Arab chronicler Suleiman describes the army of the Pratiharas as it stood in 851 CE. The ruler of Gujas maintains numerous forces and no other Indian prince has so fine a cavalry. He is unfriendly to the Arabs, still he acknowledges that the king of the Arabs is the greatest of rulers. Among the princes of India there is no greater foe of the Islamic faith than he. He has got riches, and his camels and horses are numerous. <laughs> Conquest of Kanorj and further expansion The metropolis of Kanorj had suffered a power vacuum following the death of Harsha without an heir, which resulted in the disintegration of the empire of Harsha. This space was eventually filled by Yashovaman around a century later but his position was dependent upon an alliance with Lalitaditya Muktapida. When Muktapida undermined Yashovaman, a tripartite struggle for control of the city developed, involving the Pratiharas, whose territory was at that time to the west and north, the Palace of Bengal in the east, and the Rashtrakutis, whose base lay at the south in the Deccan. Vatsraja successfully challenged and defeated the Pala ruler Dharmapala and Dantidurga, the Rashtrakuta king, for control of Kanorj. Around 786, the Rashtrakuta ruler Dhruva. C. 780 to 793 crossed the Narmada River into Malwa, and from there tried to capture Kanorj. Vatsraja was defeated by the Dhruva Dharavasha of the Rashtrakuta dynasty around 800. Vatsraja was succeeded by Nagarbhata II, 805 to 833, who was initially defeated by the Rashtrakuta ruler Govinda III, 793 to 814, but later recovered Malwa from the Rashtrakutas, conquered Kanorj and the Indo-Gangetic plain as far as Bihar from the palace, and again checked the Muslims in the west. He rebuilt the great Shiva temple at Somnath in Gujarat, which had been demolished in an Arab raid from Sindh. 
Kannauj became the centre of the Gurjara Pratihara state, which covered much of northern India during the peak of their power, c. 836 to 910, Rambhadra 833 c. 836 briefly succeeded Nagarbhata II, Mahira Bhoja c. 836 to 886 expanded the Pratihara dominions west to the border of Sindh, east to Bengal, and south to the Narmada. His son, Mahendapal I 890 to 910, expanded further eastwards in Magadha, Bengal, and Assam. Decline Bhoja II was overthrown by Maripala I Several feudatories of the empire took advantage of the temporary weakness of the Gurjara Pratiharas to declare their independence, notably the Paramaras of Malwa, the Chandelas of Bundelkhand, the Kalacharis of Mahakoshal, the Tamaras of Haryana, and the Chahamanas of Shakambari. The South Indian Emperor Indra III c. 914–928 of the Rashtrakuta dynasty briefly captured Kanauj in 916, and although the Pratiharas regained the city, their position continued to weaken in the 10th century, partly as a result of the drain of simultaneously fighting off Turkic attacks from the west, the attacks from the Rashtrakuta dynasty from the south and the Pala advances in the east. The Gurjara Pratiharas lost control of Rajasthan to the feudatories, and the Chandelas captured the strategic fortress of Gwalior in central India around 950. By the end of the 10th century the Gurjara Pratihara domains had dwindled to a small state centered on Kannauj, Mahmud of Ghazni captured Kannauj in 1018, and the Pratihara ruler Rajapala fled. He was subsequently captured and killed by the Chandela ruler Vidyadhara. The Chandela ruler then placed Rajapala's son Trilochanpala on the throne as a proxy. Jasapala, the last Gurjara Pratihara ruler of Kannauj, died in 1036. <laughs> Gurjara Pratihara art There are notable examples of architecture from the Gurjara Pratihara era, including sculptures and carved panels. Their temples, constructed in an open pavilion style. One of the most notable Gurjara Pratihara style of architecture was Kajaraho, built by the vassals, the Chandelas of Bundelkhand. <laughs> Maru Gurjara architecture Maru Gurjara architecture was developed during Gurjara Pratihara Empire. Topic: <inaudible> Bateshwar Hindu Temples Complex. Bateshwar Hindu Temples, Madhya Pradesh was constructed during the Gurjara Pratihara Empire between 8th to 11th century. Topic: Barali Temples Complex. Barali Temples Complex are eight temples built by the Gurjara Pratiharas, is situated within a walled enclosure. Topic: Legacy. Historians of India, since the days of Elphinstone, have wondered at the slow progress of Muslim invaders in India, as compared with their rapid advance in other parts of the world. The Arabs possibly only stationed small invasions independent of the Caliph. Arguments of doubtful validity have often been put forward to explain this unique phenomenon. Currently it is believed that it was the power of the Gurjara Pratihara army that effectively barred the progress of the Muslims beyond the confines of Sindh, their first conquest for nearly 300 years. In the light of later events this might be regarded as the chief contribution of the Gurjara Pratiharas to the history of India. <laughs> List of rulers Nagarbhata I, 730 to 760; 
Kakishta and Devaraha 760 to 780 Vatsaraja 780 to 800 Nagarbhata II 800 to 833 Ramabhadra 833 to 836 Mahira Bodja or Bodja the first, eight hundred and thirty six to eight hundred and eighty five Mahendrapala the first, eight hundred and eighty five to nine hundred and ten Bodja the second, nine hundred and ten to nine hundred and thirteen Marapala the first, nine hundred and thirteen to nine hundred and forty four Mahendrapala the second, nine hundred and forty four to nine hundred and forty eight Devapala 948 to 954 Vinayakapala 954 to 955 Marapala the 2nd 955 to 956 Vijayapala 2 956 to 960 Rajapala 960 Trilakanapala 1018 to 1027 Yasapala, ten twenty four to ten thirty six.